We are now going to delve into the exact meanings and uses of each of the symbols you've learned. Truly mastering symbol and datum selection will clearly take more than a few hours of training, but you should have a clear understanding of each geometric characteristic and a few ideas about the best times to use them by the end of this unit. As we progress through the symbols, you should pay attention to which symbols can define a one-dimensional feature, such as a line or axis, and which can define a two-dimensional surface, such as a plane or three-dimensional feature, such as a curving surface. Also be aware of what each symbol does not control for. Just as defining the length of a cylinder does not define its diameter, some symbols may control more or less than you would initially think. We're going to start with the symbols from the form category, as they are perhaps a little simpler than some others. We'll cover straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. An important fact about form characteristics is that they do not need to be locked into place with datum references. A quick example is flatness. We will soon describe exactly how flatness is defined and measured, but it should be easy to understand that the flatness or smoothness of a surface does not depend on how the surface is oriented. A very smooth surface on a table is still very smooth even if you tip the table or even flip it over. This is important to remember because as you use form controls, you will also need to use other symbols as well to control location, orientation, and size of features. You could not build a table if all you knew was how flat or smooth the surface needed to be. We will start with straightness. Straightness defines how straight a line is within a tolerance zone. The two common types of straightness callouts are surface straightness and axial straightness. Surface straightness calls out a one-dimensional measurement, typically along a surface. This could be a cross-section of a part or a surface of a cylinder or cone, if taken along the axial direction. Along the indicated line, a tolerance zone is then created and all parts of the feature must fall within that TZ. A surface edge that has a straightness of 0.03 would be held still, and along this line, the variation of the surface must fall within this TZ. A simple way to gauge straightness is to hold the part steady and slide a gauge pin along the line you indicate. The pin cannot vary more than the defined TZ. On a cone or a cylinder, a surface straightness callout would require the same measuring process to be conducted around the entire surface at as many of these lines as possible or practical. Similarly, a straightness callout of an entire surface like this requires as many cross-section measurements as practical or reasonable to be carried out in the direction indicated. However, a callout along a single edge like this would only require the single line to be tested for straightness. Cylinders, cones, and single edges like this are logical applications for straightness. For each of these callouts, straightness is only defining a two-dimensional cross-section in the direction you indicate. Since parts are three-dimensional, you will only be assuring straightness in a single direction and may be allowing for undesired effects. For instance, even if every line drawn across this part's surface in the indicated direction is straight, the perpendicular profile has not been controlled for. Rotating the part shows the lack of straightness at the opposing angle. Similarly, controlling for straightness does not control for orientation or location. On this part, a straight line could easily be at a steep angle or too high or low for what you intended. Straightness does not control orientation and location. Another form of surface straightness is derived median line straightness, which can be used for flat part features such as tabs or slots. You'll see here the placement of the indicator arrow seems to be across the entire slot as opposed to only one surface. This means the straightness callout is referring to the derived median line of that slot. A derived median line is found by locating the median point of every cross-section perpendicular to the DML we are creating, and connecting these points to make a derived line. This derived line is then checked for straightness within the specified tolerance zone. This process would then need to be repeated along as many of these control line elements as reasonable or practical down the length of the slot each one creating a tolerance zone around the DML of that cross-section, 
and each tolerance zone being parallel to the view of the drawing in which the straightness callout was made. Because these DML straightness checks are independent of each other, this does not control in the opposing direction, and an uneven but symmetrical slot like this would still have a DML with intolerance. The DML straightness is also complicated to gauge, as two lines must be gauged, and each DML derived from the gathered data. For these reasons, this is an uncommon callout. The third type of straightness is axial straightness, which, unsurprisingly, is used to measure how straight an axis is. For a cylindrical pin or hole, the axial straightness callout would control the derived axis in the center. An axial straightness creates a cylindrical tolerance zone in which the axis must fit. Axial straightness is sometimes used as a modifier for a feature. For instance, and without getting into too much detail, here is a rectangular part with a single projecting pin. The pin has a relatively large position tolerance of 0.05. A pin that has a large tolerance for position of its axis creates a large tolerance zone. This large axial location tolerance zone means that a bent pin like this would still meet specs. As you can see, the axis fits inside the tolerance zone. Using a tighter location tolerance that requires more exact placement might increase manufacturing cost needlessly. To allow for a larger location tolerance zone, but still insist that all pins are fairly straight, you can modify the location control with an axial straightness, so that the total meaning of your GD&T is that a fairly straight pin can be located in a relatively large area. From our side view, we will show the smaller axial straightness tolerance zone. This smaller TZ allows the pin only to be slightly bent, like this. The larger position TZ then means that the slightly bent axis can be located and oriented anywhere within this larger position TZ. Once again, be aware that because axial straightness is the straightness of a derived line, it does not control the actual surface shape, meaning that a symmetrical but poorly made pin would still have axial straightness. Remember to define the location, size, and orientation of these features with other symbols.